Light me up, don't you stop Cause tonight, it's on the line Show me how, you get on down Close my eyes, take me for a ride Good morning and welcome back to my channel for another vlog. Now today we are heading off on another road trip up to Harry Fry's racing yard. Now you may recall a couple of months ago myself, Tina, Meg and Lucy headed up to Epson and had a view around Simon Dow's yard, seeing into the typical day of life of a racehorse. And today we are doing very, very similar, um, but obviously at a different yard, we'll have different setup, a different routine, and you guys still have got time if you want to go to a race yard and view it through your own eyes. Today is the very beginning of National Racehorse Week, the first year, pilot year, that they've ever done it. And I've got to admit, the response that they've had for it has been absolutely amazing. So there is about 100 yards, if not more, across the country that are opening their doors, their gates, for you guys, the public, to come and view. And as I say, see it through your own eyes, a typical day in the life of a racehorse, see them be treated as kings and queens, and what goes on behind the scenes of a racing yard. I'll be honest, I was totally and utterly new to it, and I didn't really have any idea before going to Simon's. I obviously have now got a little bit more knowledge, and I'm excited to go up and see another yard today. So today is the 12th of September. National Racehorse Week is running for obviously a week until the 19th next Sunday and as I say you have got time if you want to go and view a racing yard you've still got time head to nationalracehorseweek.uk type in your postcode it's so super easy and then find out where your closest yard is I will warn you there isn't many spaces left on the guest list at these yards but you might be lucky and find one close to you obviously being in Cornwall we probably don't have quite as many yards down this way but you guys might find one closer to you and if you're thinking that you have to go on a weekend you don't they are opening all monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday all throughout the week so it can fit in with you today obviously tina and i are going together and tina's mum is coming along too and we are going to try and be a little bit more strategic on what we vlog to make sure that our vlogs are separate but at the end so make sure you stay tuned i'm going to have some people which is what I love about social media and Instagram. I asked on my stories last night, anybody who has got an ex-racer and is living its second life, please get in touch. So we're going to hear from them at the end of this vlog. So as I say, stay tuned. I'm going to jump in the car. I am driving today, taking Mummy Dee's car again. She unfortunately can't come today, but she is just quickly hoovering out the car, um, making sure that it's nice and clean for me, bless her. So just going to go help her finish that, and then we'll get on the road, go pick up Tina, pick up Tina's mum, and carry on up to Harriet Fry's yard. So as always, guys, I hope you do enjoy the vlog that is about to begin. If you do, please do make sure that you give it a thumbs up leave a cheeky comment and of course hit that all important subscribe button if you don't already and also maybe comment below anything that you learn in this vlog anything that you perhaps didn't know or it's changed your view your opinion I would love to know because it really has opened my eyes going around Simon's yard I mean I will pop the link in the description to that vlog below so if you haven't seen that yet be sure to check that out it's set to be a good day I'm not gonna lie, I did hope that there might have been a little bit of sunshine, but that's okay. It's allowed me to actually to pack a jacket to wear, my Welly Gogs jacket, so we'll be wearing that today. Just saying a quick hello to the ponies. Nala's having a quick run before being left here. So yeah, let's go get in the car and get on the road. Yeah. So where are we? We've just stopped off mm -hmm. in a very good, I'll follow the camera around. <laughs> yeah, not so your head doesn't get Yeah, so we're about an hour away, roughly. The traffic's not been too bad, um, but we've just found, Catherine has found us a very lovely little place to stop. Do a little pan. We've got lovely cakes. Yeah, you do just see more of Catherine's wonderful vlogging, head over and watch Tina's vlog. Because she's in charge of the camera today, yes. but she doesn't realise she's currently holding Emily's, not mine. <laughs> Girls. We're here. We're here! Oh, that was easy to find. <gasps> Once we had the right Once place we to go. <laughs> <laughs> no? Ah. And how lovely that they're stood out there waiting to welcome yeah. everybody. Yeah, and it was really well signposted to say it was in here. Oh, and it looks lovely. Mum's vlogging away. Oh. 
Oh, oh, oh. And thank you. Oh, oh my vibration. goodness. <gasps> Oh, sorry, you won't hear from that house. Your mum will wish she'd come, Emily! <laughs> oh. And can we just appreciate they've done lovely straight lines? On their lawn, lawn. yes! Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. <gasps> I'm excited. Oh, look, and they've got to jump there. Oh, I wish we brought the ponies with us. <laughs> well, they do, Oh, at least we are actually on time. Yeah, we yeah, are. Even with going wrong. It's exactly two o'clock. <laughs> That's a first for us. Look how many people are here. That is insane. Oh, it's so nice to see they're so well attended, isn't it? Yeah. I love how I've given Mum my my ca my camera to vlog. And now you're on. And now I'm vlogging on yours. So. Are they parking us. Or? Like I'm not to vlog, but vlogs it still because she doesn't think I'll do it very. No, this job. is for Emily's. No, this is mine because I'm driving. <laughs> uh, we're gonna try our best not to duplicate things, they guys. Have to do one each. Hence, mine's being Thank slightly you. different by having Mummy do it. <laughs> no pressure, Mum. As we've seen, we have arrived. We've just queued up and we're just waiting. I'm not 100% sure, but I think we're going to get some programmes. I think we might even be meeting Harry himself. He's sort of greeting everybody, saying hello. And then we've got some gorgeous barns over there that I can't wait to get into. Catherine's already picked up. Tina's mummy's already picked up, but there is ice cream here. Oh, look at all the colours in there too. <laughs> All the different colours. Yeah, there's loads of different um, colours in there. Do they have different colours for each race or is it? Ooh, um, interesting. Don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Good question. That's my question for later. Please don't let me forget it. <laughs> so straight away, you're very tall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we have met up with Harry, who we are here um, looking around at the gorgeous facilities. You just said you've been here a year. That's right, yeah. 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 So, Amazing. Can't yeah, we built it. Uh, it was an old farmyard, so we yeah, flattened it and started from scratch. So oh, um, it's been uh, yeah, a bit of a project in the making. Yes. Well, thank you very much for opening your yard up to us today. Not at all, looking yeah. forward to having yeah. a look around. And it's a brilliant turnout. Yes, no, we're very happy. Yeah, there's a good, good crowd. So um, hopefully, yeah, they're all getting to enjoy themselves and have a good look around and meet the equine stars, which is oh, what it's all about. Been, yeah, so. we've marked, we've marked yeah. them. Who's the ones we yeah. need to I've go got the pillow to for a to go. Yes, good, good. so uh, we will go and, and get, your, get your question yeah. in straight away about oh, the colours. Oh, yes, the colours. Yeah. So all these colours, are they for like, this is going to sound silly, but like different races? Or? No, no, all, every horse has an owner or a syndicate, oh. it, an individual or group of owners, syndicate yeah. partner. And then it's racing in club. relation to and that is, they are the colours are specific to each individual owner. So, um, oh, amazing! Okay. So, um, so that's yeah, that's just a selection of our owners' colours. So, um, yeah, so that's part of the fun of owning a racehorse. You yes. design your own colours. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, there you go. You can yeah, tell we're complete newbies, can't yeah. you? Yeah. That was my <laughs> question <laughs> already answered. Come and have a round. Good yeah. look round. Thank All you. Our team in the polo, green polo shirts, so they're there to. And we can nab ask. them. They won't mind being Yeah, no, you ask them. Yeah, ask them as many questions as you like. So, yeah, you're very welcome. Awesome. Thank you okay. very much. No Cheers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Is everybody in your home today? What's going on? Mm -hmm, no pretty. They're all so chilled. Oh, that one's a big... Oh, look. And they've all got their bums done. Guys, I said to stay tuned until the end where I'm going to make this vlog a little bit different and I've just bumped into the lovely Hannah, follower, um, who has also got some extra racers. Yes. You got two, did you Yeah, say? two. One two. called Snowy, one called Phil. Oh. I didn't name them. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> And you're going to help me with the little engine yes. part. I'm going to send it. She's only just been told that. She's only been told, yeah. <laughs> right on the spot, but agreed straight away, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and hopefully you'll have that. So stay tuned for Hannah and her gorgeous two horses later on in the vlog. I don't actually know what your stable name is, but this is Rock on Ruby, who is very chilled, mm -hmm. a lovely bay, and is a 2012 champion hurdle. Yeah, we're I'm hoping I've said that right. Before, weren't we, yeah. When we came in. So we found the one. Ruby. You're Irish too. Yes, you are. I'm no, it? Apparently, the majority of the horses in the stables are Irish. Hey. <laughs> and she just got told the majority are also Bay. <laughs> yeah, they're lovely. Is everybody in your home today? Is it a bit different? <laughs> like getting loads of attention. Yeah. If the cat fits, I really that name has really tickled me. Hello. You're lovely. 
into barn three. So we've already done barn one over there, barn two, and then opposite. Oh, hello, you've come to say hello to me now. Hi. Hello. And now into barn three, again, full of horses. I will try and find somebody to find out exactly how many horses are hit in at the moment. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at all these rugs. Now, I did just ask, and they have got currently about 50 to 55 horses in at the moment. So obviously they're going to be needing all those rugs. They do get turned out. They tend to go out in twos, out into the paddocks, which you can see behind. Lovely, big, spacious. Basically, they go out in groups, the ones that they're not gonna hurt themselves, as you can imagine. Two at a time, they've got their bestie they go out with, but they'll keep each other safe. And then they've also got ones that go out overnight as well. Um, what they call the out nighttime horses again going out in groups. They've all done a parade this morning for the owners. We did a parade for the owners. Oh, okay. So all the owners were in the school, like outside the school, and we paraded their horses for them. Oh, okay. What, just for them to see them, yeah. how they're looking, and that sort of thing? Yeah, and oh. there was um, an explanation for each horse. Yeah, Harry was telling everyone about the horses and oh. what their plans are for the season and that. Oh, amazing. About all 50 horses yeah. that you've got at the moment. Yeah. Amazing. Ah, yeah. interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. You can explain to me now. I hear you're the biggest on the yard and you're still rising. 18 hands. Hence the reason that I'm like too short to film you. Oh, are you going sleepy? Is that nice? Is that nice? <laughs> oh, is that the spot? Oh, they're all just so lovely and like, they're really chilled and really like affectionate, aren't you? This yard was built for purpose and you can totally tell just by the way that it's all laid out. Everything has been so thoroughly thought through by Harry and his wife, Kira. So here on the side, we have got the wash bays. Of course, obviously when they go out on the gallops in the morning, as we saw at Simon's yard, they tend to go out three, four, five, six of them at a time. So you need more than one shower, other there's going to be a little bit of a queue. And then boom, they come back here, they all get washed off and then head straight into the walker to cool down and have got the most amazing, oh my goodness, I don't know what these guys are doing around here, but the most amazing mountain block. So the horses walk through here. And then we've got... Okay, thanks very much. Right, I'm coming. Ready? You haven't got a hat on, Em. Um. I haven't got a hat on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Wowzers, that went super duper quickly. I can't believe that the two hours is almost up and we will be, yeah, we're off to find some food, some lunch. But it has been wonderful having a look around here, seeing the facilities, meeting the staff. They're, they're all so lovely, just like they were at Simon, so passionate and their care and love for all the horses as they talk. We've obviously met Sir Ivan, who we all know is a little bit of a favourite amongst the staff. Don't forget, guys, if you want to come and witness this this today has run from two till four but all yards are opening different days of the week different times and if the yard that you want to go to is full they will be holding a waiting list so you never know you might be able to get onto it and they are also doing one of these yard tours virtually so you could be sat in your pajamas watching it through a screen whilst even sat in your living room so i'll pop all those details below you need to go to national i've got a wasp now nationalracehorseweek.uk and find out if there are any spaces or like i said you can join the one virtually but for now we're going to go off and find some food change home time we're almost at the coming home trees we're before. almost at launchton well not quite we'll be at the coming home trees before launchton we stopped off for a lovely meal thanks you just ended it for Oh, yeah, well, I've done my vlogging today, so I'll do yours. Shall I hand haven't over you, to your special haven't, guests? Haven't used your voice enough. No, I haven't. I've <laughs> still got plenty of voice left. <laughs> Not husky. No, it was a brilliant day, and it was lovely looking around at Harry Fry's and his wife's Kira, their design of a oh, yard. Oh, incredible to know that it, they designed that from scratch. It's amazing, Woo, and you insane. can tell it's all been so thoroughly thought through of where certain things are for 
It's like the writs for horses, basically. Yeah, in the order that you're going to use them, it's just like, oh, yeah. move on to the next thing. Like, the I like the mountain the walk. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> oh, yeah, it was lovely and it was really nice to have a look around. All the staff were so friendly. Helpful, weren't they? Inf informative. Yeah, they've all been there quite a few years. Yeah. I've been at the place that they used to be at before they yeah. moved there. Because they've yeah. only been there a year. So, yeah, really... They're a team of, they're a family team, aren't they? Yeah. So you can tell they're a Yeah, it's yeah. very nice. Very much like it was at Simon Yard, Simon's Yard when we went there. Now, as I said about staying tuned in, go on, you can introduce it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're dying to. No, oh, I don't God. know what you're introducing it as. Basically, you did a bit of research on Instagram, didn't you? And said, if anybody has got an ex racehorse, which lots of people have, and then amazed. now have a another career after racing. Second please get in life. contact with me. And so many people did. I mean, I don't think you're even going to be able to include every single one, are you? I'll try my very best. I even if it's try. just a short snippet. Yeah, but so it, we've sorry got, if you've said something and I've had to trim it down or something like that. Yeah, apologise. Some but. people sent some through to M this morning before travelling up, and I watched some of them on the way up, and I was just like, oh, it's amazing. And if yeah. the amount of people that actually replied and said, yeah, I lost my old boy, but I've now got another one. Yeah, or like we'll always two. get an ROR. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. Um, so a huge thank you to all the following people. I'm not going to obviously list off all their names now, but I will pop their Instagram tag and their horse's name on each of the videos. So enjoy seeing them, getting yeah. to learn more about their ex racers and what they get up to. Yes, together as a partnership. Aww, and we met the lovely Hannah up there, so yes! she'll be included in this too. Yes. And Snowy and Phil. Yeah. You could start with them, then. Good idea. Over to you, Hannah. Hi, I'm Hannah, and this is Tichonese, and this is Snowy Valley, both of which are ex racehorses and who have been with us for a while. Um, so, Tichonese, or Phil as he's known in the stable, is an 11 year old gelding who ran over three miles, over fences and hurdles. He had 10 starts um, and then he went on to point to pointing where he actually won a race. Um, it's his only claim to fame was that, that one win. Uh, other than that, he wasn't a very good racehorse and tended to be out the back. Um, but then he actually ruptured a tendon in 2017 and we rehomed him back in 2018. From then we have taken a long time to rehab him um, he hasn't been the easiest to do so with and we are now just enjoying our happy hacking and our fun rides and just seeing where it takes us with him with snowy valley or snowy as we know him as he was a flat runner and ran over a mile and three and he had 12 starts um, he actually ran on an all-weather surface rather than um, grass he then retired back in 2014 since then, uh, we actually rehomed him in 2015 and he has done a bit of dressage with us, a bit of riding club, um, but he was sadly diagnosed with kissing spines back in 2020, so we've been rehabbing since then, um, taking it nice and slowly, but he is now just starting to come back into work fully and he's doing his, um, kind of his dressage, his fun rides, his hacking and a little bit of show jumping across country as well. Um, so we're hoping to get out next year and compete a little bit more, but we'll see where it takes us. Um, generally, as a racehorse, both of these weren't the best, but we wouldn't have had them if they weren't. And they are so loving, so generous. They've just got so much heart to give. They really will try and turn their hoof to absolutely anything. Um, and I wouldn't be without them. Hello, my name is Poppy and this is Finn. He's a seven-year-old 16-hand ex-racehorse who finished his racing in July 2019. I first met Finn when his owners uh, were looking for a field to retire him into at only five years old. He was no longer doing so well at his racing, he wasn't earning them enough money and therefore they did not want him anymore. When I first heard about Finn, I instantly wanted to go and try him. I begged my mum for, for days um, that I could have him. So we got him vetted and after his last race, he came home. I've now had Finn for two years. And although the first year was quite difficult, I was only 14 years old and he was a big horse to step up onto. We've had a great last year. We've been doing hunter trials, dressage and show jumping. He previously went clear in his first 90 hunter trial 
and qualified for three classes at the British Show Jumping National Championship at 90 and 100 centimetres. We've taken part in pony club, fun rides, uh, moorland rides, lots of fun stuff and he's taken to it all so well This is very different from their racing. Earlier this year, Finn finished top of the British Show Jumping ROR Club League, which is out of the whole country, which is very, very cool. These X racers can take a bit of time to learn to trust you, but once you've got each other's trust, they'll do anything for you. I think that there should no longer be such a negative stigma around X racehorses. They can do pretty much anything that your normal horse can do and more, because they're so, so giving and loving to their rider. Oh, too beautiful. Thank you for letting Finn be part of your video. This is Bertie and Theodore Anderson are venting. He is an ex-racehorse who is five years old. We have owned him for seven weeks now and he has been nothing but a joy. We have been cross country to a PC rally, a show jumping competition and many more amazing things. He loves to have a good role. We have had to teach him everything from being on the bit and a contact to going through doubles whilst jumping and seeing fillers. The plan is to event him, as he has a lot of scope. Hee <laughs> hee, as you can definitely see. My name's Emma and this is Crumble. Crumble is a six-year-old ex-racehorse that I've had since February 2019. He is a happy hacker. Um, I bought him from a retraining yard in Kent. Um, He'd only been off the track for 10 days, but he was useless. He'd lost all of his races. Um, so they sent him to the retrainer's yard. He was there for 10 days um, and I bought him. So I've had quite a lot of work to do with him. Um, but he now stands at the um, container, ready to be tacked up, which he didn't used to do. Um, and he does anything for a treat, um, which is lovely. <laughs> um, only gets exercise in the summer because being a thoroughbred he's not very good with his feet he loves to lose a shoe and in the winter with the ground it's just not worth having his feet ripped apart so he has the winter off and then in the spring he has his shoes back on and i slowly bring him back into work um and he loves his job he loves going out for hacks canters around the fields around the woods um absolutely loves it but he's also the sort of horse that would be quite happy to be left as I say all winter um, or for a couple of weeks if I'm busy with work in the summer he's quite happy so long as he's got food and his friends he doesn't care do you you don't care no um, but yeah this is Crumble this is Ali also known as True Ally she's a 16 hands retired racehorse and she's 12 years old um, when Ali was racing um, she had three pretty unsuccessful runs she was a bit too slow and she was retired at five. Um, when she retired she went straight into um, a, a quite a novice home and she wasn't really given any proper sort of education or retraining um, so she didn't get on too well and she was actually turned away for a few years. Um, when I met Ali about a year ago she was somewhat feral but I saw something in her that really made me fall in love and after being out of the saddle for almost 10 years I knew that meeting this wild anxious but really sweet girl um, was meant to be and that our, our paths were just meant to cross. She has come a really long way in, in the last year. Um, we've schooled away from home and we've attended clinics. We've certainly had our ups and downs but she honestly has become the most sweet, most affectionate and hilarious girl. She's pretty much gone from the one on the yard that everyone's afraid to go near to being such a sweet girl that everyone wants to give bus to. So I think that ex racehorses honestly shouldn't have the stigma that they do have around them. Um, Ali has proved to me that with hard work, a lot of love and patience, you can have the most unbreakable bond with a horse that's just so affectionate, hardworking and just wants to please um yeah i know that ali's gonna give me a lot more years of fun and happiness hi i'm esme and this is seeker i've had him for just over three weeks now we brought him after going to see another horse but i fell in love with him and couldn't leave him there he was a successful racehorse until the age of 12 where he had a tendon injury and had to be retired he then went on to 
live a life as a non-ridden horse for a year. Since, since we brought him home, he has been hacking out for 10 minutes every other day as, it, as part of his rehab plan. We hope in the future he will be a happy hacker or dressage horse, but our main aim is that he will live a happy, enjoyable life. So this is Bert, um, racing name Eastern Leader. He is now 22 uh, years young. Bert raced until he was eight, both in Ireland and here. Um, he was bred by the Mullins family, and despite being very well bred, unfortunately, he wasn't a particularly successful racehorse. Um, so we understand his history is that he came over here, retired from racing at about eight, and then we think possibly did some eventing. Um, I bought Bert for the princely sum of one pound when he was 17 years old. Um, we actually came to view a house um, to possibly buy it and he actually happened to be here. We didn't really notice him at the time um, but his old owner asked if I'd like to consider keeping him here. So I came over and tried him, loved him and said that I would have him and he's been with us ever since. And um, what do you get up to on Bertram? So Bert is now 22 so he is sort of semi-retired. He is the most brilliant happy hacker you can possibly imagine. He is safe as houses completely sensible, um, will take the most nervous of rider and give them a brilliant ride. And um, is there anything about Bert or racehorses that you think is particularly good? So I would say racehorses have been there and seen it and done it um, with pretty much everything. So <laughs> they are very used to being transported, they're used to being seen by the vets. Um, Bert is brilliant having his teeth done, having his injections, he doesn't have to be sedated. Um, for anything um, to the point where the veterinary students often ask if they can practice using Bert as a patient. He is cool, calm and collected, um, except when my husband tends to ride him and then he thinks that he's back racing for some reason. But aside from that, he is as calm and as gentle as you can possibly imagine. Hi, I'm Rach and this is Prince. Prince is an ex-race horse. He was trained on the flat, um, but unfortunately never made it to be professional. Um, just a little bit slow. Um, I've owned Prince for 15 years. He's 22 now, um, still in full-time work, which is fabulous. Um, but we are sort of taking it a bit more steady than we used to. Um, I've yeah I've owned him since he was eight years old um, and we've sort of dabbled in a bit of everything really um, but our forte definitely is dressage um, he's just an absolute superstar I've never ever owned a horse like him at all I would say thoroughbreds by far are my most favorite uh, breed um yes he is a little bit cheeky sometimes but his his mannerisms uh nothing can beat them he's fantastic to hack he likes to pop a jump he's brilliant at dressage yes we do sometimes struggle to um get in an outline but that's probably down to me more than him um but um, no, he's an absolute superstar. He's barefoot. He's been barefoot since I've owned him. Um, never had shoes on. His feet have been absolutely brilliant with, you know, the right care and good farriery. They've been absolutely brilliant. He's just the absolute dream to own. I could not honestly recommend um, getting an x race horse. They're just such loving, loving animals. Um, and he's never sick. He's never sorry. He's just been an absolute dream i will hopefully have him for the rest of his days but he is a cheeky little ma ma mister aren't you hey but um no i honestly i could not recommend x race horses any more than uh, what i said in this video they are an absolute pleasure um so docile so calm they have their moments but what horse doesn't you know it's uh it's in their nature but um i honestly i would not uh, i would not change him for the absolute world here's five-year-old global falcon he was previously owned by dr johnny hon and won two races for charlie hills before sustaining a career-ending injury not going to get there. A game win from Global Falcon in the hands of Kieran Schumer. Oh, beginning to get up here and Global Falcon pulls out a bit more for Gerald Bosse. His character soon came out. He was a cheeky monkey and a bit of a comedian. He loved any kind of mischief and interaction. Fifteen-year-old Ella is his main pilot, although the whole family have been on top.
Still early days, Anello will continue to progress with him. Whilst being mindful of his previous injury, we are excited to see where his potential leads as a riding horse. He is very much part of our family and will have his forever home. Warm Plays, who we have renamed around the yard as Squash. It may or may not have something to do with his colour. He came to me in February of this year um, after he retired <laughs> straight from the track um, in February. His last race was the 13th. He um, has since then, he's done a little bit of schooling and um, we've done our first jump and started hacking. He hacks alone and in company and is just the sweetest horse. Um, he came to me directly from the trainer um, after I'd previously had one of his horses beforehand. Um, he sadly was put to sleep um, in December of last year. He um, then offered me squash. He likes to stay in touch with all his horses and I provide him with regular updates of him. He is hoping to be my event horse. Um, but we might concentrate on dressage. I just need to put my brave pants on for the jumping phase. Really come into his own body in the last couple of months after going on a small holiday. When I got him, he was 15.3 and racing fit. He's now measured a couple of weeks ago at 16.3. And as you can see, he's currently bum high and still growing. He's just been fantastic. He's the sweetest horse. He obviously loves carrots and treats. His favourite things are kisses and cuddles and he's just the most affectionate horse. He really is a good horse to show that race horses are loved members of the yard. When we picked him up, the trainer himself came out, gave him a brush, picked out all his feet and then gave him a kiss before we loaded him on the lorry and took him home. I've owned several horses, ex-race horses, and I would never, I'd never go back. They've all been various ages and they've all did, done various disciplines from national hunts to um, chases to this boy who was just a flat racer. He was too slow in racing. I think it really is nice that horses can not just run. They can also have a loved home after racing. Apologies. <laughs> he loves cuddles and scratches. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, handsome. Hi, everybody. My name's Andrea, and I'm here to tell you about these gorgeous X racers we have here. The chestnut is Benny, and the bay is Basic, who I loan. So, let's tell you a little bit more about Basic. His full name is Basic Fact, um, and he started racing when he was rising four in 2006. Now, Basic has a bit of a claim to fame because his first two years he was ridden by an incredibly talented jockey known as A.P. McCoy. I'm pretty knowledgeable on Basic's previous racing career and where he came from because there is this fabulous resource that you can use on the British Horse Racing Association and you can literally just find uh, the section on horses, type in the horse's name and it brings up all the information that you need about your horse. So you can see Basic ran 25 times, placed 13 times and won twice with AP McCoy. So a little bit about how he came to me um, and how he came onto the yard he was. So he was retired from racing in 2016 after a recurring injury meant that he couldn't race anymore. Um, the yard owner of the yard that we are on at the moment um, is very good friends with his previous owner who did race him and he then came along um, and he was put up for loan and then that's where he stayed. He's having a pretty much a, a quiet retirement and um, he's not doing as much work as he used to but we get out we go to school higher we do jumping we're hopefully going to do some cross country when I 
put my brave pants on um, and as I've uh, shown earlier in this video you can see he's with his racing mate with Benny I'm not really one to ride X racers and he's probably the first one I've ridden since I was in my teens but uh, he is the most genuine and lovely horse I have ever ridden this is our little Sunday morning treat for him Hi guys, I'm Kirsty and this is Pete, formerly known back in his race days as Psychology. We are based in Aberdeenshire, Scotland and I bought Pete July last year. Um, just with, I landed really lucky, um, a friend, seen him on Facebook, she knows the trainer really well um, and she dropped me a tag and 24 hours later I think he was bought and a week or so later he was home. Pete's retired sound and well, he literally um, it was mainly due to, to COVID, um, you know, the slower ones were kind of getting sold on and moved on because obviously there was no racing, so it was just extra stalls to muck out. Um, so yeah, he came to us and I didn't start from scratch, but we, we, we kind of did. We took him right back to basics and, and had some uh, groundwork and stuff done with him just to kind of re-establish him. We were very fortunate. He'd been very well started. He... He knew his job, he knew his manners, he's fantastic on the ground, he's a nice boy to deal with. He decided he was ready for his first show this year. He'd been away to a couple of training days away from home just to kind of get him used to different arenas and setups and different horses on the go. And then this year we took him to um, a BS show at the start of July where he was a very good boy. He behaved impeccably, he was extremely good. Um, and then in the middle of just July, we decided to throw him in at the deep end a little bit and we took him to a six day jumping show locally, um, which was, yeah, he was put on the spot and he performed, he was very good. I think the goals for this year are to get our double clear British novices over winter and then hopefully um, maybe the end of the year, beginning of next, move him up a class um, and see how he is. He's certainly got lots of promise and enjoys his jumping. Um, I'll send Emily a photo. Um, and she'll maybe insert it so you can see just how exuberant he can be. My advice is if you're thinking about an ex-race horse, it's good fun. And um, they have their moments and their challenges, but at the end of the day, they're very, very rewarding. Um, they're lovely, lovely horses on the ground. And um, the majority have been very well started, which makes our lives a bit easier. Um, but yeah, no, they're they're worth it. They're worth the uh, hard work and the determination to get them to where you want them to be. Um, so yeah, good luck guys and enjoy your journey. This is Lucky Country, ex racehorse known as Lily, um, or more affectionately known as Baggage. Picked her up in 2011 from the trainer, out the field after she'd raced in the spring, she'd been turned away. Uh, brought her out the next year, did his riding club training and some low level sort of dressage and show jumping with her. Then in 2013, we came out with the aim of eventing. Uh, she managed to pull off a win at an unaffiliated 80 that first season. So the next season we came out, we started off some 80s again. We did the riding club qualifiers where our team qualified for the championships and then where she ran to pull off a second at the championships in her arena. So we decided we'd step up to 90. And we went to Barch College and we came third on a 28.5 dressage, double clear. Absolutely chuffed. And she comes out with a regional qualifier. Then we decided to call it a season that season. And then we came out the next season in the May and went to Broadway for another B90 where she pulled off a 29 dressage, a double clearance at the time, with the win. We then headed that autumn to Sapi for our regional qualifier, where she pulled off a 31 dressage, double clearance at the time, to come fourth, gaining our ticket to Babington. Later that year, we went to Blenheim for the amateur eventing dressage championships for getting so many sub-30s. We qualified, and then you did a test, and then if you did well in that, you qualified for the final in the main arena, which, again, she did. And we rode in the main arena at Blenheim, which is going to be one of my highlights with her. It was incredible. And she pulled off a fifth in the main arena. I smiled from ear to ear the whole way round and just enjoyed it absolutely thoroughly. And then the next season, we came out, of course, to go to Babington. She was a little bit wild at Babington. First day away show, she was very green for that kind of environment at that point in time. It blew her brain a little bit, but uh, she pulled off a 31 dressage, which I was really pleased with. And then when it came to the show jumping, she was jumping like a stag in the warm up, a little bit too much potentially. Went into the ring, was jumping really, really well, had a pole down, and then a related distance to the next fence, she decided she wasn't gonna do it. Decided to stop with impressive breaks. 
and then of course unfortunately typical baggage again when she said no she was not going to go over it and i had to walk out with the big fat e gutted not to have completed but thrilled she got me there then later on that season we came back out and she pulled off a ninth at her next event seventh at her next event and then a win at her next event followed by another sixth and a seventh so that season it was nothing but placings or ease and it was all or nothing with this girl but my god when she gives you all it's well worth it fortunately next season we came out and she got a ninth again at the first event um her next event unfortunately she gave me her first 20 and she just wasn't feeling 100 percent herself she wasn't had, didn't have to quite the love for it as much so we decided to retire for eventing and just do some dressage with her where she then went back to blenheim and did the ror champs where she came 10th and then we did some bd dressage and stuff with her the quest and got to the quest regional so she's retired to the field with her friends where she's living very happily just demanding food and love and um yeah and she will be here forever she owes me nothing she has been an absolute dream she's definitely caused me some stress over the years as all horses do but my god she has given me some results and for a you know a horse that wasn't wasn't bred or designed to do anything that i asked her to do she was a flat x racehorse she has been the amateur's dream and my next horse has got a lot to live up to yep I love her to pieces and I'd definitely get an X-ray sauce again. I think they're amazing. She's amazing. Hello, my name's Amber and this is my thoroughbred racehorse, Roger. Um, Roger's a five-year-old gelding and I've had him for two years, haven't we? Two years. I've just given Roger his breakfast. Um, I know very little about Roger's previous history, but what I do know, I will quickly tell you about. I know he was bred in Helston in Cornwall um, and he has a brother. Um, I believe by the time they were one is when they went to Devon to a racing yard. Um, at the end of this year, Roger wasn't very good. He, his heart wasn't in it and he was a bit slow to actually make it as a racehorse. Actually, my mum that found the advert for him. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, she was the one who kept going, Amber, I found this horse and i said nothing to anything that's young or anything that was like 15 hands um at this time roger was literally verging 15 one maybe 15 hands and he was three um <laughs> and we went to go and view him i rode him and then i loved his like temperament and how calm and chilled he was so a week later we actually did end up buying him um, and he came home with us here in Hampshire. One day I hope to maybe do a few fun rides on him and maybe do a few one day events. Roger will always have a forever home with me and I hope this has given you a little bit of an insight into what it's like having a thoroughbred. They are honestly like the most chilled, calm temperaments. They fab make fabulous all-rounders. They can literally do anything um, and obviously we will not push anything. We will take it at its own rate. So this is Double Gem. Found out about him 11 years ago from a friend of a friend who said that there was an ex race horse who was no longer going to be able to continue racing because he broke down. And we got him. He was my pony club horse for about two, three years. Hey, and then you turned into my dressage diva. You've competed up to very low level BD Elementary, only Elementary 42, seen as like the easiest one. And, um, yeah, he's got like 18 novice points. I'd like to get him to 20, but he's 22 now. So I hope I have like two more seasons left because he was meant to be retired about six years ago and um, he's still going. So yeah, <laughs> the best eggs racehorse in my personal opinion. Definitely been the easiest out of the two that I've had, haven't you? Mwah. You live up to your name, Double Gem, don't you? <laughs> Hello, my name's Harriet. This is Barley. He's my 16-3, 13 year old ex race horse. Um, in the winter, we do trail hunting, and in the summer, we do pony club. He's my first ever sort of big horse we have owned. Um, when we were looking, Mum really just wanted to get like a thoroughbred or ex racer, just because of all the stigma around it. But then, since we've got him, we would definitely consider another one, as he's completely changed our mindset on them. He is just complete clown at times but also we love him so much on the ground he's a complete gentleman to handle and yeah we all love him so much hi everyone 
My name is Charlotte and this is my 16-1 Chestnut Mare X Racer Fern. Um, we have been together for about five years. Um, I got her when I was 13 and she was seven. Um, her racing career was extremely short-lived. Um, I think she stopped when she was about three, only did three races and you can tell why when you take her to the gallops. She is impeccably well behaved, not strong and is more than happy to just simply stay in a canter. Um, we currently dabble in dressage, emphasis on the word dabble. Um, we're at novice level currently and hoping that early next year we will step up to elementary. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about us. Thank you very much for letting us be in this video. Um, I hope it's given you all a little insight into the fact that these lovely animals can easily have a second career after racing and they take to it like a duck to water really, don't you? Um, so yeah, thank you. Oh, I hope that you've enjoyed watching all of them and learning a bit more about some other followers just like you sat at home watching this and thank you to all of them for getting involved and sending me through the videos pretty quickly because we all know what I'm a bit like, I'm a bit last minute.com. But as always guys, I hope that you have enjoyed following us around. Like, comment. comment. And of course hit that all important subscribe <laughs> button if you don't trees broadwood uh, Broadwood Woodja we get excited when we see these trees because it means we are nearly back in Cornwall Yeah 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 go and pass the lawns <laughs> I oh, think somebody how you say Broadwood Woodja Broadwood Woodja What? I always call it Broadwood Woodja Oh my oh, this is controversial too Right anyway on that How note. do you say how do you say it? I don't remember but it's really funny <laughs> If anybody lives near Broadwood Widger, please let us know. <laughs> please tell us how you pronounce it because apparently we pronounce it wrong. I'd love to say leave a comment, but can you just send me a voice note on how to, <laughs> yeah, how to say it? But That'd these are great. the trees, this is our view, and that's when you know you're nearly in Cornwall and then you're at Broadwood Widger. That's how we're going to say it and probably will remain to say it. So apologies if that offends anybody. Forever. Else. It's a bit like Swaycliffe and Swaycliffe. I know. Also want to say a huge, massive thank you to Ree, who works for the Racing Foundation, Racing Grants that got us, all four of us, involved in National Racehorse Week. So huge thank you to you, Ree. Very much appreciate it and I've really enjoyed being involved and I'm... Yeah, it was lovely to see behind the scenes and very insightful, wasn't it? Because, like, we openly admit, neither of us really knew much about racing or the background behind all. it, did we? No, so. but I feel a lot, like I've got a lot more yeah. knowledge about it now. Definitely. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be back next year, so watch out for that, guys. Exactly cause... that, and also if you're watching this soon, there may still be places at Yards yeah. over the coming few days, so do go and check out the website if you haven't already. You may well be able to attend, or keep your eyes peeled for a virtual one. I think I touched on this earlier, but it's not yet available, but it will be very, very soon, and once it is, I will edit the description below for you guys so that... I know when it is and that you can go on to National Racehorse. Yeah, so anybody all around the world can also get involved too. Yeah, from the beauty of your own sofa. But on that note, guys, over I'll see and out. You, yeah, and we'll see you all very, very soon. Bye! Bye, Mum. Bye. Bye, Tina. Bye.